Hi everyone, John Day here. I just want to give you a quick update about the Windows 11 latest hardware requirements. I'm seeing a lot of people over the web having major issues with this and equally I'm seeing a lot of incorrect information going out on other YouTube videos. So I just want to give a guide to this if I can. Now, Microsoft launches the Windows 11 preview to Windows Insiders next week. And so many people are struggling with the minimum specs and the PC health check, which is about as helpful as an umbrella in a tornado. So there are several key points that you need to check carefully. And the first one, for some reason, is getting overlooked way too much. So I'm going to go through the common issues uh, that are popping up in the best order to check them. Firstly, I've provided a link to the proper Windows 11 requirements page below, which has everything you need. Now, this video is based on the information currently rolled out as of Sunday, 27th of June, with the early release uh, of Windows 11 going out in a few days' time. Okay, the first hurdle is the CPU. Some people are looking at the 1 gigahertz or faster with two or more cores, thinking, I've got this licked, and then scratching their heads wondering why the health check says it does not meet requirements. There is a cutoff point to the generation of the processors. Microsoft were hard flooring Windows 11 to Intel 8th gen or higher, uh, or the AMD 2nd gen or higher. Now this is going to put a lot of millions of millions of users uh, into a bit of an upset bag because if your PC or laptop is four years or older, chances are it's not going to meet the specs. And here's the really unbelievable thing about this. Out of the 25 different Microsoft service devices, only 13 of them are eligible for upgrade. Service Hub, uh, Service Studio will not be legible. Many of these are still on sale today. Um, it's just ridiculous. The oldest model that can upgrade uh, is the Surface Laptop 2 and the Pro 6. And these were both released in October 2018. That's less than three years ago. So they've kind of put a really tight constraint on these PCs, despite what was broadcast um, on their live sort of live stream about the thousands of computers that can all upgrade. It's uh, kind of a little bit of a mystified uh, mention. So if you're not sure what generation your CPU is in Windows, just hold down Control, Shift, and press Escape key. Now bring up your Task Manager, and you need to click on the Performance tab and check the CPU. For example, um, if it's an Intel Core, i5, i7, whatever, just read the first digit after the dash. And if it's an 8, 9, or 10, you're fine. And as you can see, this one's a 7th gen and is basically screwed. Secondly, you need to have TPM or Trusted Platform Module 2.0 now. So it was actually at 1.2 in the earlier specs. And on the 24th, they raised it to 2.0. So first of all, what is TPM? Um, it's what encrypts your content uh, using hardware uh, isolated from the processor. So your content is basically safer from being hacked, etc. That's the idea. Uh, it's just better encryption. Think of it as a uh, security pin for your house or car, but in a way that the burglar can't actually get to that keyboard because it's literally isolated away from uh, the, the thing in question that you're trying to access and work with. So the chances are, if you bought a computer in the past six years, you may well have TPM. The question is, which type? There is two. Uh, most of are looking for the TPM 2.0, and of the two types, that is kind of that is FTPM or firmware TPM, and that was released when TPM was at version 2.0. Uh, any computer bought from around, let's say, to be safe, 2015, 2014, 2015 is most likely has this more modern type. The other type is called discrete TPM and is associated with TPM 1.2. And Microsoft have now said that basically it has to be 2.0. Now, if you have an Intel processor, the chances are you will see this as Intel PPT, which is simply their name for a TPM. That's just how they call it. Okay. If you have an AMD processor, then 
pretty much a computer from 2017 with AMD, you should be okay. Now, I say should be. How do I actually find out if I have TPM? You can check this without booting into your BIOS. Okay, simply hold down Windows key and press R and then type in tpm.msc and then click OK. A window will pop up and tell you if you have TPM or not, if it's present or not. If you're looking at the status, uh, you're looking to see if it says ready for use and the version, which is in the bottom right corner there, should say 2.0. If it does not show as available, um, hold tight because you may have it installed but not enabled and Windows can't always detect it, especially at 1.2, it's harder to check anyway. Anyway, there's one way to check this out without booting to the BIOS again, and that's through PowerShell. If you've never used PowerShell, don't be frightened, it's just a grandiose DOS with a blue screen, okay? So you open PowerShell as administrator, type get-tpm. This will show if TPM is present and whether or not it is active. If it is not active, you'll need to boot into the BIOS and enable it. I'd love to show you the dozen ways this can be done depending on your type of BIOS, but I'm bound to miss someone out. So I'll recommend that you look it up uh, for your motherboard model. Go on the internet, look it up and follow the instructions. Okay, what if you do not have TPM? All, not, all is not lost. Your motherboard may have a TPM connector where you can plug one in. So you check what pin type you need. This would be on the motherboard. Uh, and it would be either a 14 pin or a 20 pin typically. Uh, and they were retailing between 30 to 50 pounds or dollars. But shock horror, many online stores, as I've checked today and yesterday, are out of stock. And I'm gambling the prices might go up, seeing as they're now all of a sudden in demand. Okay, the next hurdle will be the Unified Extensible Firmware Interface, or UEFI, or WAFI. I'm not even going to argue how you pronounce it, I don't care. What is it? Um, it was introduced to cope with the much larger storage devices and the more grander options that the regular BIOS couldn't cope with. And in particular, Windows 11 wants the secure boot option from the UEFI. UEFI or WAFI. I call it WAFI because it's so much easier. Um, this basically makes the US boot um, well more secure. It actually uh, makes sure only drivers and loaders that run when you boot uh, have a valid private key so the OS is happy when there's no viruses or ransomware trying to boot in. Okay. Now, chances are you have the UEFI or UEFI. Um, they're not new by any means, but the secure boot needs to be enabled and is a more of a recent sort of option in the UEFI. So if you have Windows 8.1, chances are it's already enabled as it was a requirement of Windows 8.1, but funny enough, not Windows 10. Don't ask. Do you have this WAFI? You can check this in PowerShell again. So open it up as administrator and type confirm hyphen secure boot UEFI. That's all one word, no spaces. If it says true, you do have it. If it says commandlet not supported on this platform, you don't have it. Now, if the only issue is your CPU is not of the required generation, do not panic. Microsoft have not listed and checked every single CPU. In fact, I don't think they bothered checking the older generations. This would be a job for the Windows Insiders developers. Therefore, your CPU may, I say again, may be able to support Windows 11 as the Insider developers test the OS. So this will take a few months, and don't forget they've got this deadline where they're trying to release it around October, November, I think it's November. Uh, so by then, you never know those OSs, those, sorry, those processors might just be on the list. Now, if you can't wait a few months to find out and you wanna test it now, you may be able to do so, but be it on your own head and providing Microsoft don't decide to lock this down at the last minute, because this 
should be okay. If your CPU is a really powerful 7th gen Intel or 1st gen AMD, you still may be able to do this and install Windows 11. What you'll need to do is go to your Windows Insider program settings and change your channel to dev channel. You will still get the warning that you do not meet the hardware requirements, but this now becomes more of an advisory rather than a block stop. Okay, now this will give you a more recent and possibly less stable version of Windows 11 than what you would normally get as a standard sort of beta test, if you like. So this is offered to developers to test the OS extensively. So it's you could consider it a not quite so safe to try release, if you like. Uh, so the risk is yours to take if you want to go down that path. Bear in mind the specs are narrow in the pre-release period and it's shocking that it is but that's the way it is so please 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 look at the specs fully not just the bullet points actually click on the links in the bullet points along each bullet and check the additional pages of requirements i don't anticipate this will solve all dilemmas i hope it gives you enough so that you don't waste days of your time trying to solve what is ultimately a dead end I will be scoping out the Windows 11 release soon, uh, so please click like and subscribe below if you want to be kept posted with my reviews or if you want any tips and tricks that you want to ask me about on Office 365, which is really where I go, and especially on the Power Automate, which is where I love to be the most, um, but that includes SharePoint as well. So oh, stay safe, have fun, and don't be too despaired just yet. You might be in with a shot. Take care.